Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Yong Gen. I'm a professor at uh, NTU. Actually, I run a uh, center called NTU Center of Computational Technology in Finance. Actually, we look at both AI and blockchain. So what motivates me to present something, uh, a thought today is actually, as we all know, human being has been always driving, look for a grand unified theory in our modern, phys in our modern physics uh, research, the start from the uh, uh, the old uh, gravity, uh, uh, gravity to the latest, the strong force. We always try and look for a, a unified theory to unify all of these physics. So just like you know, examples like uh, in the early uh, 19, uh, 1912, we look at the unified field theory, as well as in 1947, we have this uh, grand unified theory, and also latest one in uh, 1970s, people start to propose the string theory as the one uh, theory to look at to unify all the forces uh, we have observed, that the four forces. So actually, that motivates me when I was looking at my own research. Uh, we have two technologies that's, that's been transforming our society uh, tremendously lately. One is the AI, as we all experienced over the last uh, no, three or four years, which is the uh, large uh, the, with the invention of transformer and all the latest uh, uh, large language model, it has tremendously, tremendously transformed our lives. At the same time, you know, since 2000, uh, away, online, uh, the blockchain started to emerge in our society. It also transformed uh, our society as, as well. So actually, then naturally for us to ask that question, would it be possible or would be a necessary to unify AI and blockchain in some level of unified theory. Actually, probably for those who attend a, a session uh, at NTU uh, in early September, uh, when Vitalik came to give a talk at NTU, he was asked about you know, what are the relationship between AI and blockchain. Actually, that's one of the uh, um, moments actually inspired me to think about this question as a professor. Would it be possible for us? to come up with something to actually uh, find, or maybe some, find some, even in the uh, weak form, find some synergy between AI and blockchain. That would be interesting and hope us to, uh, to look at these two uh, seemingly very different topics into the same context. And I think, uh, ideally, that could potentially inspire us some further additional research and advance in both topics. So actually, as a professor in computer science, I naturally go back to the, uh, uh, the fundamentals or first principles of both technology. Let's start with the, uh, with the AI. Uh, I'll uh, particularly look at the latest large language model in AI. So actually, as you all know, attention is all you need in AI nowadays. People call that. And you, if you look at the, 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 the transformer architecture, it's very simple. Based on the history sequence of uh, uh, words, each transformer aims to predict the next word, or as uh, 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 Monsieur, uh, Monsieur just mentioned, is trying to predict the next token. So as of that, it's actually really natural to say that the predict next token is all you need in the uh, large language model or latest the generative model. So that's actually quite simple. All you need to do is using some kind of computing method be that computing method, be a, uh, be a, be a, uh, uh, be a uh, neural network, a neural model, or, or, or being something, just compute that thing, as you can see there. Actually, it's quite naturally to say, it's computing. But that computing, if that computing can be verified easily, then we know, we know that we are put, uh, we are trying to predict the next token use a verifiable computing. So that's actually sounds familiar probably to a lot of you guys to know about the blockchain. So actually that's my next slides. I want, I, I want to share with you actually in blockchain in, in, in its uh, beginning of the uh, 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 2008, people start talking about proof of, account, uh, proof of work. So in the proof of work, the basic operation is for us to calculate the hash of a certain input and try to predict uh, what would be the next uh, nonsense announce allow us to get the next block. So in that sense, blockchain 
the all it was trying to do is trying to predict next block using some computation method. And the most important thing here, this hashing function is also a some sort of verifiable computing. So now you see, in both the AI and blockchain, the most fundamental operation here we are looking at is something called verifiable computing. So actually, as a, a computer scientist, it would be naturally for me to actually put them together. Uh, in the middle, you've seen the hashing function, or you've seen the transformer. It's all in our computer science. We call that verifiable computing. We can easily verify whether you are doing something which can serve some purpose. And the purpose of that verifiable computing in the, uh, 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 in the blockchain context is trying to predict next block. For some reason, people call that token. Uh, in the transformer, it's trying to predict the next, actually, it's trying to predict mining the next token as well. It's actually, <laughs> magically, we also call that token. And these tokens are just uh, 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 nominally, but actually, they are doing the same thing. Actually, at the end of both computing, we need one thing to power this computing. It's the electricity all the power. As probably you heard a lot about over the last couple of years, you know, crypto consumes a huge amount of energy. And at the AI field, we also mentioned that we also consume a lot of energy. So let's look at how much energy these two technologies actually consumes in our society. So it's actually quite easy to find information about how AI and digital twin is going to cons uh, amount of energy is going to consume. On the left chart is from IEA showing that by 2026, the amount of AI and the amount of cryptocurrency is going to consume. The amount of electricity both technology is going to consume. Actually, they are very close to each other. So if you look at the sheer volume of those two, actually, uh, it's roughly uh, the size of uh, Netherlands or the size of Japan. It's quite a huge amount of energy consumed. But if you look at the most fundamental unit, how much energy one needs to consume to achieve that, that uh, token or predict or mining that token. So in the large token model, it's roughly a range of uh, two to five joules per token. That's the uh, uh, transaction unit, how much energy you need to consume to uh, predict next token. In the uh, uh, crypto, if you use the ETC and BTC as references, actually this amount of token in its uh, uh, unit is, is quite huge. But of course, if you divide those big number as the most, the base unit, for example, if you use BTC as the, uh, as, uh, BTC, if you use Natasha as the fundamental unit, that's divided by that uh, 1.08 is point. Uh, so, you, so basically, if, if you, rather than using one, uh, 10 to the power A, if you use 10 to the power 16, that will be roughly the same, same uh, size. So actually, actually it inspired me probably in the next Next blockchain, I would like to de uh, uh, develop, rather than use a random fundamental unit, you can use the energy as a fundamental unit, say how much, uh, how much uh, joules you need to uh, consume to predict the next token, use that as a fundamental unit. Then you can bring the AI and blockchain in the same context if you use the energy consumption. And this actually inspires me to think of what I can do with the similarity, or if I call that you know, unified theory between AI and the blockchain, what I can do, what so what? So actually, assume what I present actually makes sense to you. I hope by now you, you actually find that interesting. So what's next? So one thing is how AI can change or, or transform my blockchain. Actually, everyone complains about uh, complains that in, in POW, we're just doing this hashing function without any purpose. So actually, taking what we do in, in the large language model, specifically large language model inference, if that computing is verifiable, then we can use that as a proof of useful work. Very naturally to do so. Actually, in computer science, in, 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 in crypto, uh, people start to look at something called uh, ZKML. They already have some preliminary research, try to make the large language model inference as a useful workload, such that we can use that to, uh, to mine next token. Actually, 
we also noticed there are, there are companies or there are uh, uh, trends to start to use that, uh, moving towards that direction. So the most important thing here is this verifiable large language model inference could serve as a useful uh, workload for POW. And the other aspect is we flip the coin what actually blockchain can, can inspire AI. Actually, one thing I noticed is in our blockchain space, it has a business model to produce this highly dedicated and specialized mining machine. Just hard code the hashing function into that uh, chips and sell that as a miners, to the miners. And actually, in, on the right side, on the AI space, so far we have not seen that people develop these dedicated chips just for the large language model uh, inference purpose. But as time evolves, we agree, as also Mr. mentioned, in the future, the only f AI is dead. That means actually only a few large language models will exist in the world. So if those large language models are standardized and they can be easily verified using computing method, and actually naturally people will start to produce these dedicated chips to do the large language model inference as a result. So there will be people selling different flavor of these large language model chips for you to actually install in your uh, people now call AI factory, or as Jensen Huang mentioned, AI factory will be all over the world and then start to see a lot of these things going on. And then that provides a viable business model easily for those traditional miners just slightly change their uh, function within that chips. They can immediately overnight become the uh, AI, AI company. And then actually I, we do see some of these old, old uh, uh, the previous miners actually, uh, uh, mine, mining machine manufacturers start to look into this business uh, to look at the uh, use dedicated chips to do large language model uh, inference. And those models can be easily verified and we, we have some collaboration with some of these uh, players in the market. So these are the easily verifiable large language model can be uh, built into uh, dedicated chips for new business model. So with that actually it's quite uh, nicely to say that this verifiable computing uh, can, can be as a, a grand unified theory for AI and blockchain. That's my own uh, view. And of course, this is only the beginning. Actually, we are doing some research, see whether we can uh, develop more uh, substantial uh, evidence to show that we can use the verifiable computing as a framework to actually look at both the AI and, and blockchain at the same time. So in that case, we can uh, uh, put the two most uh, innovative and most transformative technology in our society into the same framework. As a professor, I like to do that. And uh, as a professor, I also have the other aspect of my, my career, try to promote education. So actually, I, I actually developed this uh, master of science in blockchain at NTU. Actually, we, sh we can shamelessly claim that we are the first master degree in blockchain actually offered by a university ranked top 30 in any ranking. <laughs> so if you guys are interested, feel free to find that the contact information uh, or uh, search uh, NTU. NTU means Nanyang Technological University. Actually, there are two NTUs in the world. So just look, uh, actually three NTUs. You can look at that. Uh, actually, so far, we've run this program for the last couple of years. Uh, we have produced, on average, uh, 100, 250 uh, technology uh, uh, developers for blockchain industry over, over the night. And with thanks to uh, Vitalik, he has kindly offered his name for us to run this program. He has been serving as the, uh, a, a key ad uh, the advisor for this program, actually. Uh, with that, I'd like to conclude my talk. Uh, if you have any further questions, you can feel free to uh, Google my name on, online, and then you can send me an email. Thanks.